Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Are we doing tonight? Yes. Was it last year that we were here and it was just a toad strangler? Yeah. Or was that the year before? I mean, we were about to drown, weren't we? But the Lord gave us a beautiful day today, didn't he? A good night tonight. We're so glad that everybody's come out in a little bit of an early starting time, and so I'm expecting uh, several folks to still be coming in, and I would say that we'll probably fill up about every chair in here tonight, and that'll be a blessing. Well, my name is Les Butler, and I'm glad to be here today, and uh, we are going to have a good time. We've got some of the greatest folks in the world that's in gospel music that will be on this stage tonight. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Yeah, that's for sure. Brother Jerry Edgel, are there stairs up here for you to come up? Would you come up here? Let's pray. Thank the Lord for the day. Thank the Lord for uh, the weather, the safety of travel that all of you had, and your health. And thank him that you are here tonight where that you definitely can get a blessing. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the day. We thank you for your blessings to us. You have blessed us in every way that we could ever, ever hope for. We give you praise for our health. We give you praise for the means which you have blessed us with. Amen. That we could come and meet here tonight with other people and with these fine singers. We pray your blessings upon everything that's done here tonight. And may the name of Jesus Christ, crucified, resurrected, ascended, and soon coming King, yeah. may he Amen. be glorified yeah. in all that's done. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Well, we're going to start with some new friends. I've never met these folks before. They're going to sing a couple of songs. And uh, are they local folks, the Fowlers, from here, from Belmont? Okay. In this area. Well, Fowlers, where are you? Come on out. Don't be nervous. You can't sing from behind that curtain back there. Well, I reckon you could, but it sure wouldn't look funny. Where are you from, Fowlers? We're from Tremont. Tremont. Belmont. Belmont, Tremont. There's more Mots around there. <laughs> Were you going to do a couple for us? What are you going to do? What's the first one? We're going to do uh, Winter Either Way. Oh, and yeah. Brother Roger asked us to sing one of their songs. We're going to sing When His Blood Fails. Oh, yeah. Oh, this. we're going to get this thing started off right. These are two great songs. Well, God bless you all. Go ahead and give it to us. Thank you. 
boy, what a song. Roger Johnson wrote that one. You realize we got two of the greatest songwriters in all of gospel music right here tonight. Roger Johnson and Reggie Ray. I'm telling you, it doesn't get any better than what those two men write for sure. We've got a plaque here from your management and label. That would be me. <laughs> and, uh, it says here at the very top of the page, this is in the uh, March Singing News Magazine. At the very top of the Singing News Bluegrass Gospel Chart, it says, Butler Music Group, Heaven's Mountain Band, Since the Lord Came By, number one, all across the country. Yeah. And you know, it's, uh, they don't do it for number ones, and I promise you that. They don't. They don't. Just trust me. I know you say, oh, yeah, everybody wants to. Well, no, I'm telling you, they don't do it for that. But this is not their first one. It's not their second. It's not their third. It's not their fourth. It's not their fifth. It's their sixth number one in the world. And I promise you, it is simply God honoring some humble servants. And he is blessing them. And they're going to bless you right here, right now, tonight. Make welcome your host. It's their homecoming, Heaven's Mountain Band. come here just to have a gathering. We came here for the Lord to just get in this place and for him to get all the glory and the praise. So uh, we in, we'd like for you to worship the Lord with us, okay? And uh, just be receptive to whatever the Spirit of the Lord wants, okay? There's a sweet land of rain. Oh, wow. 
Buddha's still wherever they put him. Yeah, right. Mohammed's still wherever they put him. Yeah. But the stone rolled away. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ came forward. Yeah. Thereby assured him. I don't have a hope Amen. salvation. I have assured salvation. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Sing the second verse one more time, Debbie. What joy there awaits me as my Savior begins. Thank you. 
Well, old Gavin's grown up a little bit since last year. Uh, he's got engaged, fixing to be married. And uh, he's got a little bit better on that manger, too. So. <laughs> Still having trouble with them things up there on the top, though. But, uh, <laughs> for some reason, or other, I believe you'll get that thing with you. <laughs> tell you what, there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on in this day and time. And it's being done in the name of the Lord. It's being done in the name of church. It's being done in the name of religion. God ain't within a thousand miles of But there is a way, Brother Grady, that was made at Calvary that required the blood of my precious Savior for a sorry, wretched, vile sinner like me. I'm glad there is no one. Brother Jerry, I was 14 years old when that old ship of Zion sailed by that little shack of the house that we lived in. And you know, the Holy Ghost didn't show up that day and, and, and ask me how much money I had, what my last name was, where I came from. The God of all glory came by that day and let me know that I was lost and I needed to save you. And I went out in pine thicket and I knelt down under an old dead pine tree and the old ship of Zion picked me up. <laughs> it's an old fashioned way, but it's a good one. So you know what I think I'll do, Brother Les? 
I believe I'll ride this year. I'm in the boat. Come on, <laughs> before this. And we buried him. And I got to thinking about him, something you said a while ago that reminded me of him. I got to thinking about my dad and my mom. And I'm not getting weepy-eyed because I miss my mom and my dad. I do. That, but that's not what's happening here. I'm thinking as I sing that song that it's because of him. Man, it's because of him. I know about this book. Yeah. It's because of them I was raised in the old time way. It's because of them that when somebody shouts the glory down, it doesn't scare me. I kind of like it. It's because of them that whenever somebody sings under the unction of the Holy Ghost and God gets to move and it doesn't scare me, I kind of like it. It's because of them that when a man of God gets up and gets a hold of God's word and preaches it under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I kind of like it. And as we go down through the road singing and preaching, and we were talking about this backstage a while ago, oh, some of the old-time preachers that, I, that I've grown up and been around all my life, I see them changing Bibles. I see them changing their attire. I see them changing their message. I see them changing their music. And I have, I've got news for you today. If you come to me with the new stuff, I'm just going to stay in the old boat that's got me as far as I've gone. Blood, they take it out of the book. 
it's just too old-fashioned anymore. Fred, you got here too late. I'm already on board. I'm going to ride the ship on over to the shore. And I'm riding this old ship of mine. So many before me, Lord, you say. and flow, confessions at Calvary, cleanse every sin stain, and makes one whiter than snow, and I'm riding this old ship of Zion, so many before me, Lord, it's safe, Jesus the captain. somebody call my name. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad of that. Yeah. I know here tonight that I'm, I ain't nothing. I ain't, I ain't never going to try to be nothing. I, I'm not trying to be famous and I'm, I'm not trying to do any of that. I just thank God for the good grace of God. Yeah. Yeah. I always want to live in a way that I can be a shining light to somebody else. I thank the Lord. You wouldn't be here tonight if somebody hadn't prayed for you. I promise you that. So I hope this blesses you tonight.
Always a good spirit in this place tonight. Amen. You know, I, I thought about this here, uh, Brother Les. You know, people's all the time grumbling about what's going on in schools. <coughs> well, bless God, you're a blood bought child of God sitting in schools now. What do you think you are? <laughs> should you just sit there or should you do like you've been saying? I wish we'd do this. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. I tell you, hmm. Brother Greg Brady. One day I went under the blood. Yeah. It didn't, Brother Larry. It didn't just dab me a little here and yonder. He got all over me. Yes, sir. He got all all in me. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of that. I don't know why anybody would ever want to be ashamed of that. You're a blood-bought child of God here tonight. You ought to be the happiest person on the face of this earth. Amen.
about like this right here. That sawdust and no pine straw. I remember my knees sinking up in it. That's the last thing I remember. I don't know what I prayed. I don't know, Brother Larry. Whatever it was, God heard it. But I went there feeling dirty and nasty and like I was going to go to hell. And I got up and I felt like a newborn child. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got down on my knees and went under the blood. There was just no other way and I could get Can't get over just how precious oh, yes. is my Savior's love. about half of young brother Larry. <laughs> but I tell you, we're not we, the first group to do that. Let me tell you. Somebody asked me tonight, was we going to do an instrumental? And I said, we absolutely are not. You don't do instrumentals if you've got the primitive quartet. Takes them to come on after you. <laughs> I may not ever see you again. The next time you see me, I may be walking on the street of God. The next time you see me, I may be wearing a brand new robe. Bless the Lord. We're going to leave you with this right here. Thank you again for coming. Thank you, Lord. I'm ready to move to heaven to a land that's fair and bright. Where See me, I may be living in my heaven.
and radio networks and multiple television networks all the time. And uh, God is just uh, really allowing them to take the message of the gospel the way that they do it in the old time way everywhere. We need some more of that. Y'all are dead as a hammer. Look at you. <laughs> so we just have one other group, and I think you can probably handle this group, can't you? How many of you ever heard of the Primitive Quartet? Anybody here? <laughs> How many going to Candler to their singing? Just out of curiosity, wave at me a little bit. Look at them, boys. They come to your place every once in a while. Amen. And I know they appreciate that. I tell you, if I've got any closer or dearer friends uh, in the world than these folks, I don't know who it would be. They're a blessing. They've been a blessing to me. They've been a blessing to my family for 40 years. The first time I remember playing a song, I do syndicated radio shows all across the country, Les Butler and Friends, and uh, it's a bluegrass gospel show. And the first time I ever remember playing their music on the air was 1978. That is 40 years ago. And for 40 years, I've played them every single chance that I've been given to play them because they blessed me and they bless people all across the country. And they're going to bless you right here in Mississippi tonight. Please welcome my friends, the Primitive Four. Jesus is way to come. 
old friends that we ain't seen in a while. Thank you for coming. Uh, we don't have nothing new. Same precious old story. I serve a risen Savior. I saved my never dying soul one day and changed my world. I just pray that God put his sweet holy touch on what we try to sing. I've so enjoyed the night. I'm telling you, I've sat over there and fixed it. Uh, we was on a cruise last week and they had that gourmet stuff but boy, I'm telling you, I was ready to get to the house and get a cake of cornbread and some pink cold beans. This has been cornbread and pimped old beans for me. I love, you. love that old timey way, boys. <laughs> Hope you get a little glimpse of him. That's our intent. We love you. We love you. I've got two good 
school shoes. I don't tell you how it was when I was in school. I never will forget Miss Cleo Jackson. She'd start our day reading God's Word. And the next thing I hear is our dear Heavenly Father. And then we'd stand and pledge allegiance. And then she'd say, we ask these favors in Jesus' name. Amen. Boy, have we not gone down here. My goodness. School shooting, that was unknown back in that day. And I'm talking about 1960, and the Supreme Court declared school prayer and Bible reading unconstitutional. What was it, 1962 or 63? God, we need God. We need to get back to the old past. I believe with all my heart that this little group in this building, if we got serious with God, we could turn it around. And uh, God help us to do that. But ain't he, he's still been better than good to me. After it all. Amen.
When I move up there to settle down, and when I step inside those gates and look around, I want at least a million years to view the throne. So many friends I want to see.
child, just keep looking. Or the next hill, there's a beauty full and someday I shall stand on the top of Mount Zion and I'll get to look into fellowship that we've enjoyed. My goodness, 45 years we've been doing this. That's, that's longer than some of them been living. God's watched, over, God's watched over us and kept us. And, you know, we never had no even had any mishaps on the road much. We hit a deer about, what, a couple months ago and just barely clipped him. <laughs> he run on off anyway. We still have to buy a bumper though. <laughs> but uh, we've never had any bad mishaps. And, and God just took care of the stuff in the years. And uh, kept them old buses running. And kept the, you know what I appreciate more than anything else? Is how he's kept the joy in my heart for this. And buddy, only he can do that. Now I might get a little bit weary, but boy, you have a good service. It just, it's just like filling up with premium. It, it just helps you along the way. And uh, anybody seeing this for the first time? All right, on behalf of you, we live in Canberra, North Carolina. That's near Asheville. And uh, this boy right beside of me is my son-in-law and has been for over 30 years now. And his name is Randy Fox. I appreciate him. <laughs> and Jeff's been around for going on 22 years now. Yes, Jeff. This is Jeff Talbot, the player. <laughs> and my brother.
brother Michael, my brother Larry, and I really do this.
Take this ain't for me. Lord, I just embarrassed myself so awful. <laughs> anybody, anybody found the Great American Bluegrass Show yet? Gosh, there's a bunch of you. It comes on on PBS TV, I think. Somebody told me at 10 o'clock on Wednesday night. Y'all, what time? Y'all sit up that late? I remember my mom. My mom and daddy. Dad and Mom, they they to go to bed early. Just teasing Dad about it one night, about how early he went to bed. Daddy said, "Why we sit up in our club
flesh and bone. singing. What do you want to do? Let's just do an old-fashioned throwdown. Somebody get a banjo tune up here. Come here, banjo player. <laughs> what about uh, I'll Fly Away? We can do that. Everybody turn to page 333 in your red back hymnals in your back pocket. Now y'all carry your red back don't you? 333. Let's do it in G. All right, here we go. Some glad morning when the sun is over.
Brother Roger, did you ever find, come here for a minute. Hey, Reagan, you got your book handy? We want to announce this thing for next year. Ninety-five percent, yeah. I don't know the date, but I, I know it'll be a year from tonight. So yeah. So that is Thursday. Thursday. Anybody got a calendar? Thursday. Anybody got a calendar for next year? Does anybody know what today is for crying out loud? <laughs> Today's great too. So next year will be February what? No, it will be 22. No, the last, you need the last Thursday of the month. The last Thursday of the month should be about the 28th. Okay, so there you go. Mark it down. February 28th. February 28th. Now, who's going to be here? Uh, us and the Pregnant Quartet and Les Butler. And Did you tell them why Walking by Faith couldn't be here? I did. Yes. Death in the family and sick. Uh, they might be here. No. <laughs> okay, so Walking by Faith, Heaven's Mountain Band, Primitive Quartet, and uh, me, that means absolutely nothing, but I will be here. Okay, Brother Roger? Brother Roger? Do we need to lock the doors and get the $20 bills again, or are we good there? Yeah, so y'all just sit tight. <laughs> we appreciate everybody coming. And uh, it's, it's very humbling for folks to come out like this to a gospel singing. And, uh, I appreciate You know, I, I know that Jeff Tober would want me to say this. Uh, I know 90% of the people that came here came to see Jeff Tober. So, I didn't. <laughs> You're one of us 10%. <laughs> Jeff uh, Tober uh, Oh, I bet you it's I've been touched, is it? It, it was, but we're not going to do that. We have nothing. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jeff. That's why I didn't want to see you to begin with. I knew you wouldn't sing the song I wanted you to. <laughs> see there? What are you going to do? Uh, we had a request for My Hope is in the Blood. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm thankful that You're my, off the hook, brother. That's a good one. <laughs> thankful that my hope is in his precious You're blood. Okay. It's been a sweet night. Well, if you don't know my Lord and Savior, I beg you tonight before you leave. Well, this is a good place to have a time and a place to where you can always go back to. Well, I'm thankful he came to where I was at a young age. He made me realize I was lost. I got broke. Got in bad shape. And I'm thankful that he saved me. Anything we sing tonight, be sure to listen to this second verse. <laughs> well, if we hope that I have here in this so sinful world is anchored in the blood of the Lamb. Though the billows are raging and we're tossed to and fro, Joy of knowing Jesus. 
Jesus. Yeah. We find some things that we would differ with him on. I know that. I understand that. But I think we can all meet in one spot that he stayed for his entire ministry, and that is it was about the blood. It was about Jesus. It was about the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He preached the gospel unlike any preacher I've ever heard in my life. And hundreds of thousands, millions, came to know the Lord through the gospel being preached by that man. And so though I would differ on some things with him, can we meet at that spot with Brother Graham tonight and say amen for the gospel? By the way, the gospel is, you ready for this? Write it. If you don't know the definition, write it down. It's simple. Good news. And can I say the gospel is good news tonight? Good news. It was good news when he came into this world in a virgin birth. That was good news to a lost and dying world. It's, it was good news when he lived a perfect, sinless life. Good news for the sinner because he knew I couldn't do that. And you can't do that. It was good news when he walked this earth living a perfect, sinless life. And it was good news to a lost and dying world when he gave his life for mine. They didn't murder him. He gave his life for mine. Don't believe the lie that he was murdered. He wasn't murdered. He could have called thousands of angels, ten thousands of angels, to get him down from the cross. He didn't because he had a plan to fulfill. Thank God for the plan of salvation. It was good news. The day that he went to that cross, it was good news for a sin-filled world. It was good news when he descended into the pits of hell for three days and nights. Seventy-two hours later, he came up victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and he was dangling the keys of death in front of old Satan's eyes. He whooped him, defeated him for you. And for me, can I say for a sin-filled world that sure was good news. But it doesn't end there. Because in John 14, it tells me, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Then he said, I'm coming back for you. Oh, isn't that good news for a lost and dying world? And tonight, 
You may be here because you wanted to hear some great banjo and guitar playing. And by the way, we heard some great guitar and banjo playing. You might have wanted to hear the great singing. We heard some great singing. You might have wanted to tap your toes and clap your hands and all of that. And we did all that. But that is not going to get you to heaven. You're going to have to come one way, the blood way. And you just heard them sing about that. That's where my hope is tonight. My hope is not in the fact that my daddy was a mountain preacher for 70 years. My hope wasn't in that. My hope is in the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're going to go to heaven, you're going to have to go to heaven the way I went. Confess your sins, and he is faithful to forgive you. And tonight, as we end this evening, if you came here for the toe tapping and the clapping and the guitar picking and singing, and you walked out of here not knowing Jesus, we have failed miserably in what we've done this evening. Because it wasn't about all of that. It's about him. And it's about you and your relationship with him. So tonight, if you'll stand to your feet, tonight, if you're lost and, and these songs have been tugging at your heartstrings, please do not leave Belmont, Mississippi, lost in sin. What if you were not to make it back to your home tonight? Did you know that the heaven that we've been singing and preaching and, and testifying about tonight is real? But so is hell. Nobody wants to hear about hell anymore. I'm sorry, you're going to hear about it right now. Because it's real and it's hot and it is forever. And I'm begging you, don't go. You don't have to go. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you are here tonight and you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're ready to go to heaven and you've had your heart being tugged on all evening, let me tell you what that's called. You don't hear it much in church these days. It's called conviction. Conviction. That's where the Holy Ghost starts knocking on your heart's door saying, you know you're not right. You know you're a sinner and you know you need the Savior. Good news, tonight you can meet him. Would you raise your hand if you're lost and you want to know more about the Lord Jesus Christ tonight? Take your time. Anybody here that wants to know the Lord, we will lead you to the Lord. All right, then the last thing I would ask for everyone that's here, maybe everyone here is saved. Let me ask you this. Do you have a son or a daughter or a grandson or a granddaughter or a father or a mother or an aunt or an uncle or a niece or a nephew that if the phone rang and you heard that they were in a wreck, they left no hope in knowing the Lord would split hell right wide open? If you have someone like that, oh, I'm begging you, please don't take it lightly. Please pray nonstop for them. Jesus is coming back, and I have a strong suspicion he's coming back soon. I'm glad you're ready, but is everyone in your family ready? Oh, please pray for them. Don't stop. So long as there's breath, there's hope in Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the night that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit that's been here this evening. Oh, we thank you for these great songs that have been sung and the words, Lord. We thank you for every testimony, every word that's been said. God, we're thankful that uh, according to, to what the, the folks are saying here, maybe everyone's saved. Oh, heaven's going to be a wonderful, sweet place. Looking forward to spending eternity with these our friends, and our loved ones who've gone on before in Christ. But Lord, if there is someone here tonight, God, I'm asking that you would not give them one second's rest. God, that you wouldn't let them put their head on their pillow tonight and get one minute's worth of sleep. God, I pray that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, God, would just get a hold of them, that they just simply can't find rest or peace until coming to you. God, do it. 
And Lord, for everyone that's in here, myself included, with family members far from you, God, would you put a burden on our hearts, burden us, God, to pray without ceasing, to witness to them, to live a life in front of them that they would want to know the same Jesus that we have spoken of tonight. God, and I pray from this night that we would hear reports of people that have been saved because of the challenge that's just been given here right now, this evening. And Lord, whatever good that comes of any of this will deflect all the glory and the honor to you. You're worthy, we are not. Thank you for this great night. Lord, if you don't come again between now and next year, we're going to come back and do it all over again. We're going to lift you up in song. We're going to lift you up with our instruments. We're going to lift you up in testimony. And God, we will look forward to it. We love you tonight, Lord. We give you glory and honor for everything. We ask these precious things in your name. Amen. Have you enjoyed your night? Will you come back again next year? Okay. God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you then. If not, we'll see you on the other side.